All right. Welcome, everybody, to the final session of what I think is the seventh flock, some sort of horrifically high number. We're almost at double digits with this. It might not. No, Mike? Okay, there. All right. Yes. Sorry. Welcome, everybody, to the final session of like the seventh, I think, flock. Here's Ben, who has made it awake for the. Yeah. Um, uh, Thank you all for being here and for all of your energy and hard work. Um, I really felt like this was a great conference and I felt a lot of positive energy and a lot of uh, working together and collaboration and talking and I feel you know energized for the next year until till the next flock. Um, if you have any feedback on the conference, on anything that we could have done better, there's always room to improve. We'd like next year's to be even better yet. Um, I wish we could announce where exactly it's going to be, but we're still not, we still don't quite have our stuff together on that, but it's going to be somewhere in the middle portion of the United States. We'll uh, figure out exactly, exactly where to come. I said Midwest, and somehow Denver got onto the list because people who are making the list don't, don't know what the Midwest is. Uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, here's our wrap-up session, and we'll start with Adam with minimization, I guess. Is that what you're presenting on? Wait, minimization, is that your, uh, yeah. okay. Um, and I'm gonna get off the stage, because I'm done. Um, hi everyone, I'm Adam. I'm now the minimization objective lead, and that was one of the reasons why I'm here. Um, about that, so I gave a talk, we had some discussions after that, and I was very happy that people say that it makes sense, and I got like 10 people from the community wanting to join the initiative. And that's like, I don't know, 60% Red Hat and non-Red Hat. So I, I think like this is not just a Red Hat objective. It's just something that everyone cares about, I feel. So that's great. And we'll be starting having first meeting next week on Wednesday. Um, and yeah, it goes well with other things like the federal IoT. Everyone wants things smaller. And what I learned about IoT, for example, what I didn't know is, well, haven't realized, is that it's not just a small system that needs to be immutable and small and whatever, but it's about, that it's outside, it's accessible, there's no physical security. Um, and also some of the connections are super, super slow. So that's like one of the reasons why it also needs to be minimal, not just the device is tiny. Um, anyway, so that's minimization. Then we had modularity, we had a fantastic, birds of a feather event discussion. It was quite productive. We discussed topic like um, the modules in the build route that block many people, I guess, and we have steps how to, how to move forward. There were some maybe a little bit cross distro, but like third party things like how to enable people to build modules without using our infrastructure, using their current ways of things, um, like in, in OBS or in Copper even. Um, so yeah, modularity things, that was great. I talked to Ben Cotton and Paul about Federal Magazine. We designed a new workflow for contributors to be much easier, to make it much more easier for people to submit ideas and to pick something up and write it down. So that might be interesting. Um, there was something else. Um, I forgot. Okay, I'll just let other people speak. Thanks. Hello everyone. Uh, so uh, I ran the Fedora Loves Python session. Uh, so there's this Fedora Loves Python slogan uh, movement, whatever. Nobody knows what it actually is. And uh, apparently we're not getting any more stickers printed unless we have some kind of marketing story. So that's what that was about. Uh, we have lots of notes that we need to clean up and post somewhere on the mailing list. Uh, Turns out the best thing about Python and Fedora is that you can use all the multiple interpreters we can support. Uh, if you're building a Fedora package, there's one you have to use, but otherwise, uh, if you're fine with upstream, uh, upstream uh, sources, you can use any one you want and test it on all the different versions. So people tend to like that a lot. Uh, the other thing that we are missing in our sort of marketing uh, for this is that Fedora stays close to upstream, which is quite hard because we need to make the changes upstream and 
uh, argue about them a lot, but uh, it, it pays off. So we need to talk about that uh, somewhat more. Unfortunately, there were no marketing people in the session, so uh, yeah, uh, we have stuff to talk about, but we don't know how to talk about them, so we'll try to figure that out uh, later. Uh, the other session I, uh, I was part of was PyProject Macros. So uh, that's an initiative for not storing information in spec files, but rather pull them from the upstream projects so you don't have to copy paste. Unfortunately, this involves changing the upstream standards to actually have a place to have this information. So uh, we had a hackfest on the current iteration that will hopefully get it to Fedora 32 or so. Uh, and we got some useful feedback and, uh, and uh, some PRs merged as well. So that's me. Hello, everyone. Uh, I had two sessions. Uh, first of all, uh, I introduced our uh, CommuniShift instance, which is an OpenShift instance for uh, people to prototype applications, uh, run things that are good for Fedora, run community applications that we don't have time to run, uh, all that good stuff. If you want access to that, if you were not at the talk, uh, you can email me or file an infrastructure ticket, either one, and I'll be happy to add you. Um, so there was that, and then uh, we had the CPE Hackfest this morning, and we kind of broke up into groups there. Uh, so I will just speak of the groups that I was involved in. Uh, we went kind of over our backlog of things that we want to do that are upcoming, and uh, we scoped out several of those uh, to a pretty good extent. We talked a lot about our monitoring story, uh, about our... Uh, uh, logging and stuff, uh, make Matthew's life better so he doesn't have to like look at AW st stats ever again. <laughs> and uh, we went over several other things uh, that were upcoming and uh, kind of how we could spec them out and get them uh, prioritized for our, for our team. Um, and just had a ton of hallway discussions. I, I do want to mention one other thing that I didn't do. Uh, Smooge could not be here uh, this year, but uh, he has been working on Apple 8 uh, a lot, very hard, and I think things are to the point where he has an announcement ready that will probably go out after Flock uh, that Apple 8 is, is ready to go. So uh, that's, that's awesome work from him, and I just thought I'd mention it. Um, so I was leading the, the second group in the in the CP Hackfest, and uh, we tried to brainstorm a little bit on how we want the packager workflow to look like in Fedora in in the long term uh, in the long term because we currently have a lot of initiatives going on in Fedora about uh, that are touching the packager workflow, the packager user experience, and we saw that if we don't come up with a unified vision on what the packager workflow should look like in you know a year or two or three from now. Uh, we may have uh, contradicting initiative, contradicting work. Then, if you know, we want to we want to achieve that point, but then this idea, which may be a good idea by itself, is actually contraproductive to the to the end goal. So we try to brainstorm a little bit on how that uh, workflow should look like. We'll need to spend some time on uh, on this still. It's definitely it's still rough. Uh, I will try to recapitulate uh, recapitulate everything we've said. Send an email to the to the devil list for for more feedback. It's not going to be uh, something that will be you know we'll all agree on uh, from the start. But it is a discussion that I think we should be looking at so that we can actually align all of our work within uh, within one direction. The second thing which I was presenting was the, the right getting work. Uh, so I'm very happy that I didn't get any rotten tomatoes. We no, nobody ran, ran out of the room screaming and shouting, and so I'm very glad for that. Uh, there will be more changes coming into that. There will be more announce. If you're interesting, give us your feedback. If you're not interesting, give us your feedback. If we are blocking you, give us your feedback. And if we are enabling you, please give us your feedback. And with that, thank you. <laughs> Hello, I have some notes, hope you don't mind. Um, so this is the design team recap. Um, Renata gave a 101 session on UX UI, and there were about a dozen attendees there. 
We also had a Fedora Badges hack fest with some very lofty goals and a couple accomplishments. Uh, we did a lot of brainstorming on different topics, such as a pattern library, um, how to incorporate badges into different processes and workflows in the Fedora project already. Uh, and our biggest idea really there was visibility. Um, really, ideas would be to revive blog posts, maybe create some infographics, get more on social media platforms, um, just kind of blast it out there as much as we can and get it in everyone's minds that this is a tool that you can use to improve your individual projects and initiatives. Um, we also talked about badge criteria and retiring some badges, uh, maybe that they don't work anymore. Um, style guide updates, and we discussed a lot about the look and feel of the, of the badges and how we might want to see that evolve. Um, Renata and Tanvi ran some usability tests to get um, information that will inform a redesign that hopefully we can see in the next year or two happen. Um, and Renata is going to provide a report for us. Uh, some ticket triage, we kind of ran out of time on that. Um, in the afternoon, we had members of the infra team attend, and we discussed pain points of the badges project, things that need to be done, things that would be nice to be done, things that would be nice to have in the future, such as improving the website speed, moving to Python 3, a website facelift, further social media integration on the website, uh, potentially integration with the Fedora OS interface, further website subcategorization, organization, filters, basically a better, a better um, experience for people using the website. Um, the biggest issue we found on the development side is automation of badges. So if people want to work on that, that would be great. Uh, the biggest success we have on the development side is that we started a discussion and planning for an outreachy intern. So hopefully we can get that moving for the next session. Um, and there is some mentor commitment behind that. So overall it was a success. Um, the main thing we got out of this, se this session was surprise, a lot more work to do. <laughs> um, and uh, hope that the project is not going to die. Um, overall, for the design team, you know, there was three of us here this year, unless there's some people hiding in the woodworks. Um, it's, it's a little discouraging. I think at my first flock, like five years ago, there was maybe a dozen or more. So it kind of feels like the team might be dwindling a little bit. Um, so I had a lot of discussions with the people who were here about why and how and where we've gotten to the point that we are, right? So there are things that I feel can be changed from inside the design team, like lowering the barrier to entry the best that we can, creating a more welcoming environment, spending more time connecting with each other on IRC. Like I used to hear that the IRC was like a hopping cool place to be, and now it's like crickets. Um, but there are also things that can be changed from the outside and the inside working together, right? So just like any relationship, we need to identify and understand those issues, communicate them, and come up with solutions. And then work from all sides to kind of come up and figure how we can make this a better thing. So this topic brings me back to Kate Houston's talk, right? Clarity, capacity, and incentives and feedback, right? So I think the main incentive we can ask for from the community as a whole is recognition and feedback, right? For example, sorry to call you out, but when Matt was talking about new projects in the state of Fedora, and he brought up why the logos were great, there was absolutely no mention of design or the design team. Like, we talked about the projects, and we said the logos are cool, but the design team was not brought up. So I think that's the kind of place that we need to think like this work is being done by real people and they deserve recognition for it, right? Um, I've been trying to figure out the right places, people, teams to connect with 
to improve these issues. And the reality is that we need help. I need help, right? Um, I'm going to make a write-up on a lot of these thoughts and um, try to say it as best as I can in a blog post. And I hope that people will read it and reflect on it, on what they personally can do and what their teams can do um, to kind of make the design team feel a little more valued and recognized for the work that we do. And also, what can we do for you? We need work to do to have that feedback loop. So that's my thoughts for Flock 2019. Hi, this is Amita. Uh, we have done DI hack test yesterday. And um, we have done a lot of work, which were pending since last six months. Uh, being together in a room with all the team members. So uh, since last few years, this team is relatively very new as compared to the other teams in Fedora. Uh, and we have very less volunteer and the team members uh, in the team. But still, we are thinking that how we can, um, with this limited volunteer time, how we can make the bigger impact. So. Uh, the one thing which we brainstorm about is collecting feedback from the community people, how they feel about. For example, Murray has um, correctly pointed out that there is the less appreciation for this volunteer work. So it's such kind of feedback we are looking for. And for that, we did uh, Coffee with Friends session throughout the flock. Some of the sessions Taktika has taken. And we would like to continue with these kind of sessions. We'll open a window. Uh, in three months of time period, and you can just fill a form or open a ticket in DI Pegger repo that you would like to talk and you would like to express that what is the pain point uh, which we can help with. So that is one thing which we added in our goal. Um, we would like to connect with the uh, internationalization uh, and globalization teams to identify that what are these important content which are being published on um, Fedora magazine or the community blog post, like the Fedora strategy or, or the mission statements, which uh, probably the most of the um, higher uh, authority people are writing. And most of them are from US, and their native, la native language is English. So uh, not everybody understands that quite well. So we would like to. Uh, figure out what that content is which needs to be translated in other languages so that people uh, will feel more inclusive. That I need that. <laughs> um, and as you have seen that we are very successful with Fedora Wednesday event which we have done last year in 10 different countries at the same time period or the same month. Um, so. Uh, we would like to do more such events like LGBTQ events since we have that format existing baseline that how to pull out such events throughout the world. So we would like to do such events more. Uh, since we are the diversity and inclusion team and we have done a great job uh, being diverse. I mean, look ar around you how many different kind of people are sitting in this room from different country, from different culture, from di of different languages. But we need to focus, um, you know, extend our focus to the inclusion side as well. Are we including them well or not? So for that, we are working um, on taking some steps and working on the event guidelines as well. So these guidelines, um, B has done a great job uh, in drafting that guidelines. And she would like to share a few points with you. So uh, we, uh, we have been working on a proposal for launching event guidelines for Fedora like event organizers. So people, ambassadors who organize Fedora release parties or organizers for Flock to help them make these events have like a more diverse audience and to make these more inclusive. And till now, like we worked, started work on this two years ago and we had a lot of feedback from last Flock which we incorporated in our recent proposal. And this time we have a lot of actionable items and recommendations, not just to the Flock organizing committee, but also for like other like smaller local event organizers 
So during the Hackfest especially, we got a lot of feedback from different ambassadors from different communities, and we like compiled this recommendation, and we will provide them to the relevant people. But what we need from you right now is to also go through this proposal, because right now the only people who have reviewed this is like a few people, but we need feedback from the whole community about this, because this is for you, and this will affect you. So uh, we will publish a com community blog post, and I really hope all of you look through it and give us our feedback. If you don't like something, if you feel it is not relevant, or if it is hard for you to do implement it, please let us know. And I would really like to hear back from you. Thanks, P. Thanks for that. Uh, so other than that, we also talked about some internal team processes. Uh, we would like to improve them, like decision-making process and DI advisory elections. You will soon see that there will be DI uh, elections in November time frame. Um, other than that, we would like to focus on the content creation. And we did create a video, uh, which we would like to show you. And before that, I would just say that um, like uh, Denise is here, and she pointed out that how important this community is. It's made by people, right? So these memories needs to be captured, and these memories needs to be shared in the graphical data, data way. And also, the people needs to be appreciated in the right way. That is the least thing we can do about the community. So for that, uh, the happiness packet is one thing which uh, the DI team would like to market enough. And please use these uh, happiness packets where you can send the appreciated words or this kind of certificate to the people in the community who are doing the awesome job. And we have some more ideas like five years completion t-shirt and 10 years completion t-shirt in community. So these are little ways or ideas which we would like to implement in coming days. So now. And please send some Fedora happiness packets to Flock event organizers, because I think they have done like a great job. job. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so here is the video which Tactica has created. And she is the awesome photographer. A big round of applause for her. And here is the video. <laughs> नमस्ते मेरा नाम निहारिका है मैं भारत से हूं और मैं हिंदी बोलती हूं Hola mi nombre es Luis Basan eh soy de Panamá y hablo español Sasriya Kal main Amita hu main India to hu te main Punjabi bolti hu Namaskar majhe naam Pravin Sarkute mi Bharatatun aalo ani mi Marathi bhasha bolto Fedora ah <rire> Bonjour, je m'appelle Jean-Baptiste, je viens de France et je parle français. Ah oui, là c'est Patrick. Je suis Tchesca. Ah bon, Tchesca. Hallo, je m'appelle Mike Fabian, je viens de Deutschland et je parle Deutsch. Sziasztok! Balázs vagyok, Magyarországról érkeztem, és magyarul beszélek. Namaszkár, ma az a Naoni Kill, mi Bartaszáhé, ani mi Mbaraki Utto. Behül a Jens Földi Tannak, vagy Tejla Tánszk. Hola, mi nombre es Alberto. Yo vengo de México, y yo hablo español. We are of different cultures. Pero Fedora nos une con código abierto. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Oof, now I have to bore you with C Groups V2 after such a cool video, right? <laughs> so
So Laura is cheering, that is cool. So uh, I promise it's the last time I impersonate Dan Walsh here. Um, but I'm pretty sure he would have wanted me uh, to talk in front of everybody here that C Groups V2 is happening and it's coming. And Dan actually pulled the trigger on it already. And with Fedora 31, the default installation, when you install it from scratch, um, the, the kernel will run with cgroups v2 enabled only. So, Neil, you might want to check Snap. We checked today, libvirt is also not working uh, yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you, it's up to you to decide, right, if you like that or not. Um, but here, just uh, basically uh, another heads up that cgroups v2 is happening. Um, we want it, or basically Dan was pushing on DEF CONF earlier this year for it. Um, somebody needs to start with it. C Groups V2 is out for many years, and if Leonard would be here, I'm pretty sure he could talk hours about why we need it and why it's technically superior. So from the containers ecosystem side, somebody just needs to start. And, well, it, this time it's us. So technically it means we cannot use RunC because the OCI specification is not there yet. So we have to use CRUN from Giuseppe Scrivano, which uh, is uh, good because he's working at Red Hat, so we can really make sure that everything is working fine. I just enabled it on my Fedora 30 machine today, and it's, it's working nicely. So I want to encourage more to follow and uh, make sure that everything is running um, any comments? Any any feedback? Screams? Is anybody scared of it? That's a very good question. Um, we will. So Dan and I will sit down with Giuseppe next week and prepare a blog post. So what we wanted to do is ideally publish it on Fedora Magazine so that we get the most um, visibility as possible and also to give a heads up early to avoid other communities uh, or to avoid them to misinterpret our intention. So for instance, there's Moby, Docker, Kubernetes, yada yada, and there's a lot of competition going on, but this is really not about blocking others from continuing to work, but somebody needs to pioneer there because uh, if not, we will, we will stick with uh, V1 forever and from a technical perspective, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, so we will prepare a blog post and make sure to give all the instructions um, from the kernel. Basically, it's just it's just changing the command line of the kernel. So you you update the grub config, you make uh, you regenerate it, and then it it should work. My famous last words. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. Can you repeat the question? Yes. So. If you upgrade, at least that's the plan, nothing will change because we don't want to break exi uh, existing uh, deployments and workloads. But if you install a fresh Fedora 31, this should be enabled. I have no idea. In the end, blame Dan. That's <laughs> right. That's it. Thanks. Um, hello, I'm Mohan Badu. I work as a Fedora release engineer, and uh, I don't have any funny stuff or uh, crazy stuff, but the stuff that people hate me for. Um, yes, uh, I retired a few hundred packages a few days back that were rawhide, and get text is one of them. Um, Anyway, so uh, I have given two uh, talks uh, this flock. Uh, one is about mass branching and mass rebuilding modularity. And uh, one thing that I wanted to ask uh, people who are here who maintain modules, there are some modules that are tagged into Rawhide, which are not supposed to be. Please let me know. I sent an email to the devil list. And uh, please create a ticket in Relange repo so that I can remove them from there. And the other thing is uh, Fedora Compost Tracker. Um, 
which actually tracks the composers and uh, lets people know what has been failing, gives some statistics and stuff like that. Um, I've, uh, I wish all the uh, SIG maintainers, especially the spins and uh, uh, labs maintainers, will get a lot of advantage of, out of it. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I wanted to let you know is uh, about Apple 8. Um, as Kevin mentioned, Smooch worked on it a lot. And uh, I, I enabled all the Koji tags and uh, Bodhi uh, updates and uh, um, nightly composers and stuff like that. So uh, it will be coming pretty soon. So look for it. Thank you. Hi all, uh, myself Praveen. Um, my first language is Marathi and second language is English. So in this audience, how many people have first language other than English? Okay, wow, that's great, very good. So, uh, you know, like uh, in this vlog, we had uh, six sessions on for non-English languages. Uh, it included the technology plus language part. Uh, three were the talks and uh, three were the workshop. Uh, I was lead for uh, CI and test cases workshop. Uh, luckily, I think many people turn out there and uh, when you have many people in workshop, I think best thing which you can do is like, you know, collaborate, talk, prioritize stuff. So we able to prioritize the stuff, uh, uh, what we know now what we have to uh, do in coming one year. Uh, that's what we did. Um, there was two sessions from the John Baptist, the nice French guy uh, who was in video. So he left, so I'm covering uh, one, se one of his sessions as well, where he, uh, he has excellent charts, okay, many uh, flow, flow charts, something, for maybe last eight federal releases. And uh, <clears throat> so he basically demonstrated that uh, the contribution at translation side, the localization side, is uh, getting you know low and lower and lower uh, because of multiple issues. Um, so I will recommend people, since there were so many parallel talks, so people who are interested to please go through his video. I think it's recorded. Uh, that's what I will cover. I think remaining part James will cover. Thanks. And on on Monday we had a. On Monday, sorry. On the first day, Thursday, we had a session on uh, Langpacks, uh, where we covered the kind of evolution of Langpacks in Fedora, and we demoed some of the changes coming into Fedora 31, like uh, Langpacks Core and Langpacks Auto Installation supporting GNOME software, and we thought a bit about future developments there. And the other thing, well, which is kind of interface of ITN and LTN, but John Baptiste gave a quite nice workshop yesterday about validating what the plans for replacing Zenata with WebLate, and that was a good, good session. I think it's a good, good uh, progress being made there. So, thank you. I, I guess that is everything, which means that gives people time to go to the bus. Let's uh, thank Jen and Veronica. Oh, wait, there's more people coming up? Okay, awesome. I'll save, save my final remarks. Uh, what? We could thank them three or four times. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jen and Veronica, for all of your very hard work on this conference. It was... Um, it was Uh, hi, I'm Morgan, and uh, together with Igor, we started Nura Fedora. Um, this was my first flock, and um, really had a, a great time. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, Ankar Sinha, who unfortunately couldn't be here, uh, but for setting up all the material for us. And um, we had a great uh, we had a great hackathon on Friday, uh, I mean Saturday morning, and um, people showed up, contributed tools, uh, got some new finite element tools in that uh, I'm very excited about. And um, we presented a poster this year at Computational yeah. Neuroscience, and uh, hopefully next year at Human Brain Mapping for the, uh, the neuroimaging pipelines. So uh, I hope everybody can have a look at uh, what we've got installed so far, maybe look at some of the, the bug reports, and um, yeah, we can use help on, on all levels here.
we uh, the machine learning sig has also been restarted and since neuro neuroscience and machine learning is very much correlated those two are also going to be merged and we have about some 110 packages right now ready and we have another some 130 140 software to package so we are looking for packages you can find us at fedora neuro on the irc we hope to see more people Thank you, folks. I actually had somebody on the elevator ask if this was a neuroscience conference, so clearly you're, you're having, having some impact. All right, before I shut it down then, is anybody else, uh, this is your chance to share. All right, going, going. All right, let's, let's, let's give another round of applause to the organizers, and again, uh, thank you, everybody. And then a and then a round of applause for ourselves because this is the Fedora community and we're awesome. <laughs>